leave is granted. I give the call to the member for Wentworth. I move amendments one to four as circulated in my name together. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I have three substantive amendments to the bill, amendments which I believe are constructive and will improve the bill. I support the bill because I believe that it's absolutely incumbent upon us um, to help drive the decarbonisation and digitisation agenda for this country to help our long-term productivity and prosperity. However, I'm putting forward these, um, these amendments because I believe in that we need to ensure integrity of government spending. Because the money that goes through this parliament is not ours, it is of the people of Australia, and because we're facing interest rate costs on our borrowing that are extraordinary, so we must ensure that every dollar is spent incredibly effectively. The first deals with priority areas in which the fund can make investments. Under the bill, the minister can designate whatever industries or sectors he or she likes to re receive investments from the fund. There is an opportunity to tighten the designation so that investments can only flow into those sectors where there is an economic justification for doing so. My amendment would require the Productivity Commission to consider potential priority areas before a designation could be made. This would prevent public money being invested where capital markets are already working and where there is no justification for government intervention. It would also prevent Australia investing public money in propping up industries where, you know, where you know, legitimately this country would like to make more things in Australia. But we also need to recognise that if the cost of making more things in Australia means that consumers bear an un unreasonable cost and actually cost of decarbonisation in increases, we need to be careful about you know, continuing to support industries where we cannot be cost competitive with other countries in the long term. The second deals with the investment mandate, which sets the rules by which the fund can make its investments. With this bill, we are being asked to support the creation of the fund without knowing what the fund's investment mandate would be. I accept there are circumstances where this is appropriate, but I believe it is best if Parliament has a power to disallow mandates which would not be supported by one or other chambers. The counter-argument to this is that the government's other off-budget investment vehicles do not have disallowable mandates, and the National Reconstruction Fund should not be treated any differently. It's a fair point, but I believe that there's an opportunity to improve the accountability of these vehicles through the disallowance process. Rather than allowing future investment vehicles to adopt an inferior practice, we should insist on improved practice and work to raise standards across the other already legislated funds. And finally, the third deals with a statutory review of the fund. The bill requires independent reviews of the fund every five years, which is a sensible provision. But I would like to go a step further and require that the first review is completed before the government can provide any additional resourcing. Simply ensuring that the fund is working as intended before it is provided with additional $10 billion of public money is a sensible and reasonable requirement. As I said in the beginning, my goal is to be constructive. I believe that each of these amendments is constructive, sensible and reasonable. I believe they enhance the integrity of this off-budget spending and improve the confidence the community can have in this fund. And I believe they're worthy of your support. Thank you.